For those of you who love creative cutting and colouring, these guys are really pushing the boundaries of hair fashion. Both are through to the British Hairdressing Awards in their regions. Um, welcome both of you to the show, Hairdressing Thanks Live. Thanks for having us. Thank you for having us. Uh, it's amazing to have you over. Um, I've been following your work for some time now. It's amazing to honestly finally, I mean, we've been talking for some time and uh, communicating, but that day has now come on upon us, which is amazing. Um, listen, tell us, Brandon, a little bit about you, your background, and where you come from, and your career as well. Right, so, uh, I'm Brandon. I'm originally from California. I've lived in the UK for 23, 4 odd years, off and on. Um, I never wanted to be a hairdresser. I wanted to be a physicist. Okay. Um, and that's Sheldon Cooper, isn't it? In, uh, that's what he's yeah, 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 yeah. That's his job, isn't it? In the Big Bang? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, but you call no. me Sheldon. Yeah, call me Sheldon. <laughs> um, I, I was placed into a salon for work experience and I, I fell in love with the craft and I fell in love with the discipline and knew instantly that it's something that I wanted to do. Okay. So Why? Was it creative? Was it, what, 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 what aspect of it that, you, that drew you to hairdressing? I just, I just loved, I loved the shapes that I was seeing and I was obsessed. I, I mean, I'm a little bit OCD when it comes to accuracy anyway. Mm -hmm. And it just really, it was just really satisfying to watch. Um, and I thought, you know, I could dress however I want and look however I want. Um, yeah. I, you know, I, I thought the lifestyle was really cool, so I, I was attracted to it. And I mean, initially, I just thought, oh, this is lame. But when I got in there and, you know, I, I was sort of in this environment, I knew very quickly that it was something that I really definitely wanted to do. Okay, very good. Tell us a little bit about your education, where you came from with your education, which has which brought you to, to today. Right, okay, so um, I worked, I started off um, after I left um, the work experience, I, I worked at John Frieda for a little bit, mm -hmm. um, and then I, I actually made friends with a guy that uh, worked for Nicky Clark. So I decided to transition over to Nicky Clark, and um, yeah, I wasn't there that long, um, but I had friends who owned a salon in the Barbican, and I worked with them, and I finished my qualifications with them, um, you know, I, I worked there for a good few years, and I, I, to be honest, I bounced backwards and forwards quite well. Not so much anymore, but I used to because you know, being American, having my family in America, having my family in England, trying to kind of find where I wanted yeah. to be. But um, I, I definitely have to be in the UK because it is the home of hairdressing. It, you know, I, I believe that we produce some of the best quality hair work, if not the best in the world. So, you know, it was very important for me to be here. It's up there with the best in the world, yes. that's not to say. I mean, it, I to, do totally agree with that. This neck of the woods, and I say of this area, um, you know, in Europe and uh, UK, uh, I, I think it produces some remarkable mm. work. However, it, it does change and differ in different parts of the world. You go to Asia it and does. things like that, remarkable work, some mm. amazing hairdressers. But however, it does alter, it does mm. change a little bit. And I think a lot of people are attracted to the, you know, the sort of European and uh, UK side of the, the, the sort of craft. I think they are very much attracted to that. I have to say though, Australia are killing it at the moment. I know. The amazing work. There. Yeah. Amazing hairdressers over Yes. There. Amazing hairdressers, yeah. Incredible. Hairdre mm. Australian hairdressers, the, uh, when they produce their, their collections, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, remarkable, remarkable imagery. Anyway, listen, uh, Barry, tell me a little bit about you, and your background. So I'm Barry, obviously, yeah. <laughs> and um, I've been hairdressing now for nearly 19 years. Actually, mm. this year it seems like a long time. And um, for me, kind of like Brandon, it wasn't what I wanted to do. Um, anyone that knows me knows I've got horses and I've always kind of ridden ever since I was. I was going to come to that. Yeah, <laughs> so that was always going to be my thing. Do Not you know only I mean? a hairdresser, but a amazing... I can ride ponies. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was going to say horse rider. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, but anyway, so I kind of, that's what I was going to do. And then I was really quite a shy and timid kid. I kind of always struggled to kind of make... that from you. Yeah, no, back when I was, I literally had no friends at school. I was a bit of a loner. Were you I, really? Yeah, and I used to literally finish school and go and ride my ponies. And I, that was just me. Okay. And then I kind of got to the point where I kind of had to think, what am I going to do? And my parents said to me, we will continue to fund your horses if you learn a skill. Okay. And I was like, okay, so I was thinking, 
oh, crap, what, what do I do? If you know what I mean, because to me, that was everything. Um, but I always had a bit of a secret side to me that I used to like reading fashion magazines Can and stuff. Can we talk about it here? Yeah, 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 oh, of course. Yeah, it's not, not anything shady. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and I used to, you know, kind of read sort of through my sister's fashion magazines and that sort of thing. And I guess a lot of that kind of also went with me sort of come, coming out as gay. And do you know what I mean? Like I kind of was finding myself. And I'd always been really interested in the hair side. Do you know what I mean? And my sister was a hairdresser. And she, I spoke to her one day and I said, look, Mum and dad are really pushing something for me to do. I was like, what should I do? And my sister said, she was like, I think you should go into hairdressing. She was like, you've always looked at these magazines, you've spoken to me, you've asked, how would we do that? She was like, why don't you go and learn to do it? Now she did hers through a college and you know, she kind of went a bit differently. Yeah. And she said to me, she was like, but I think for you- The MVQ route, right? Yeah, exactly. And okay. she said to me, she was like, I think you need to get yourself in with a big company. She was like, and she basically said it will make or break me. And she was just like, you need to learn to get confidence and learn how to speak and stuff. And she was like, I think you need to be surrounded by bigger personalities to help bring it out. So I was like, okay, so then. Do you, do you feel that helped you? Oh, massively, like yeah. massively. Like I went for my interview um, at Tony and Guy and I never, you know, when you, it's always something that sticks in my mind. Mm. I walked through and the music was so loud and it was so, and going for my oh, sister's yeah. salon, that was a little back street kind of, you know, small shop that was really quiet and they smoked in it and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then all of a sudden- I, I come from that era yeah. as well. <laughs> and then all of a sudden walking smoke. into this salon that was like so buzzing and there was like 30 stylists and it was just like, I literally felt so intimidated, but at the no. same time, I was like... Because that's what I mean. It can make or break you. Yeah. It can actually put you more introverted. Yeah, exactly. And go, oh God, this isn't for me, or whatever. Yeah. But it actually brought you out your show. Yeah, and I got the job there, and obviously I started um, as a trainee, and it was great. And the people I worked with were really nice, genuine people. Do you know what I mean? I think, you know, there was like people that were heavily tattooed, you know, this, that, and the other. And amongst all of it, they were all just really nice and genuine people and within the first month I had my first piercing and then <laughs> yeah and then it kind of just yeah skyrocketed. And how were, you, how were your uh, mum and dad, your mum and your dad were obviously really happy that you Yeah went to they were really happy because really? all of a sudden they kind of felt like I kind of my personality grew if you know what I mean and actually it was funny because when I was offered a job I was offered a job in the Tony and Guy that was near my home Okay. Or I could have gone to a salon that were, I had to get on a train to go to. Right. So my parents said to me, you need to take the one that's further away. Because I'd always been that kid that had been ferried around by my mum and dad. Right. And they were like, no, stand on your own two feet. Tell, tell me this, how long did it take you to go through your training and to get up onto the floor, get qualified? So, like three years. Three years, okay. Yeah, and I varded. Um, and that you went to was... London to varded? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, it was in London, um, in St. Christopher's Place, because I'm obviously technical. Um, and you know what, that was the, one of the best times of my life, but also yeah. one of the worst. Do you know what I mean? Like, it was just like, it was so hard. You know, you kind of, you go there and you think, yeah, I know how to colour hair. You yeah. know, you kind of think, I'm ready. Okay. And then boom, you're met with these people that are like, international art directors that you see like in you know in all the books and stuff that you have in the salons and then all of a sudden they're like going through your work and you're like it's just like a massive head thing do you know what I mean and mm. but yeah it was it was an amazing time and well, it carves you to the person you are yeah, today right exactly so sure and I stayed with the company for like 11 years mm. and you know I worked my way up and I started training within the salon and stuff and and I moved around and I tried different Tony and guys because I kind of thought Every training guy is a bit different, if you know what I mean. And I went and worked indeed, at Indeed, because they're owned yeah. by different franchisees. Exactly. So they create different cultures. Yeah, yeah, that, totally. That's basically what happens. Um, but yeah, I would never change any of that, really. No, I think, I think education stays with all of us, right? Um, yes. And, and always like something that, um, you know, if you've been well educated or you come from a background that people have influenced you, it stays with you forever. That people will always talk about that forever. So I always think that no matter you know what what salon you come from, always always offer a good education. If you're a salon owner or you're an educator, always offer that sort of standard and make sure that it's a good good standard, um, a good training structure behind it because it stays with people forever. I always remember. Uh, oh, one hundred percent. It's the backbone, Definitely. isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. But now you're with Francesco Group as well. Yep. So you're one of the technical directors. Just there. Yeah, so Do I've been with that? Yeah, so I've been with Francesco Group now for three years and 
Francesca Group's very different yeah. to like what I've had in the past, if you know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. I've kind of gone from... A massive a kind of, group. It's massive, massive yeah. but then at the same time, the creative team are really approachable. Okay. So they're really, you know, I found that they've really nurtured to bring out something that I was missing in yeah. myself, if you know what I mean. Like, I guess I left Tony and Guy and I worked for an independent salon for a few years in between. Um, and I guess I felt a bit lost. I didn't really yeah. know, kind of, I was a bit like, am I a stylist, am I a technician? Like, I was a bit like, I don't really know. And I started with um, Francesco Group and yeah, it's just kind of everything's falling into place. And I think for me, being a bit older, I kind of then had that moment where I was a bit like, maybe I'm too old now to do stuff. Cause you know, there's certain competitions. You, I can't, I can't. You're too old. Well, there's like <clears> stuff <throat> that I can't enter cause I'm over 30 now. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so I was a bit like thinking, oh, well, maybe I- can yourself off. I mean, I, I'm gonna yeah. beat you gone. So well, I, they, it? They've upped a load of these age limits. <laughs> yeah. So. But I kind of, um, yeah, I sort of thought, you know, I'm probably a bit past it in a funny way. But then, you know, the directors have kind of nurtured me and they've pushed me for things and I think, if I hadn't have joined Francesco Group, mm -hmm. I definitely wouldn't be sitting here yeah. now, yeah. definitely. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. So you do a lot of internal education for the Francesco Group? Is yeah, right? so I'm based in um, the Ringwood Salon. Um, it's like, um, yeah, so working um, sort of a column of clients and then every other week I teach at one of our academies. Okay, so, um, so it gives you the sort of ability to go to and travel. Yeah, um, and yeah. you know what, it's so good, like, because I'm really fortunate I get to teach people that are qualified. Yeah. I get to run like creative demos and that kind of stuff. But I also get to, you know, train our learners. And that's like amazing, you know, like recently my group have just learned to foil and it just excites me because I think I remember what I was like when yeah. I was that age and I was learning to put foils in and like, you know, it's so cool to be able to kind of, I've learned so much in my career yeah. and now to be able to kind of give that little bit back, it's it back. a good feeling. That's great. Listen, tell me a little bit about yourself as well with um, uh, Zulu Holland. You're one of the creative directors there. What's, what does that role look like So the outside world? I was on a... Uh, it's, it's, it's a position that I've always wanted. Mm -hmm. um, the thing that's most important to me about hairdressing is the ability to be creatively free without restriction. So I, I was on a photo shoot with Ben Brown Okay. Um, and uh, he, he recommended to me that I speak to this guy, Romano, which I've, I've heard of. Um, so I went for a meeting with him and they essentially needed somebody to come in and they needed somebody to lead uh, their five salons creatively and aesthetically throughout the industry. So, I mean, for me, that, that's all I've wanted. It's my dream job. So it's, it's really nice to be able to be there um, and have this freedom, but also allow the people um, on my team to be creatively free as well, because I know how important that is for myself. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we also do courses. We've started doing courses. Um, so the academy's starting to book up, starting to get full. Uh, we're doing it from September. Okay. Um, so, so outside people can come in or is this internal yeah, training? Yeah, um, I mean I will be doing it internally for our staff as well, okay. but um, we're holding a couple different courses um, for external people to come into our academy Brilliant. and just to see you know, something that they necessarily wouldn't have seen before. I mean, I love doing weird features. Where, where, where would you get that information? Actually, do you know what? All the information will be on your page. On yes. Everythinglive.com. Yes. You can go down to the end of the page and actually click on that and it'll take you back to yes. Holland. Um, so if you want to, uh, any further education, you can, you can, they can contact you directly. Most definitely, yeah. Equally with uh, the Francesco yeah. group as well. It's actually step down at the bottom of, of, of Barry's page and you can click on that and it goes to the education. But look, tell me a little bit about the, the education that you do do. Uh, you do, uh, do you carve out or um, uh, write up new education uh, yearly for your teams, uh, Zulu Holland, and, and present it to them? Is that how it works? Or I, I prefer to do things, I mean, obviously each year I'll focus on different aesthetics. Mm -hmm. Um, so this year I'm kind of focusing on more shorter hair because I find that a lot of stylists find mm. short hair quite intimidating. Yeah, totally. um, so we're looking to boost everyone's confidence, not only for, for commercial looks, but also for creative and competitive looks as well. So that's kind of our main focus um, and we're focusing on, on the execution of that and kind of working organically, which you'll see a little bit later today, where we're eliminating all the sections and we're working more with the head shape 
um, and, and the flow of the growth patterns. I've got something called the four factors, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. That's amazing. That's amazing. That's going to be at 1.30 today. Um, what about yourself? In a brief overview, what are people going to take away from the class today? I think for me, like, I always found when I kind of, you know, earlier on in my career, I always found colouring short hair just absolutely, I used to look and think, well, what am I supposed to do? Exactly. You know, you think you've I barely totally, got totally get that. any hair left, especially if it's yeah. a Brandon haircut. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, and I think just today, I just want to kind of show people that there's so many different techniques you can do. You know, there's so many sort of different ways you can apply colour and section and patterns within short hair that actually it doesn't need to look busy and garish. It can still look really quite simple mm. and beautiful, if you know what I mean. Amazing. And just, you know, to just be a bit more confident with colouring. Like, okay, definitely. That, that, that sounds amazing. You've got a beautiful model that you're both going to be working on. I'm so glad to see you both working together on, the, on these models anyway. Um, Barry's going to be live in about, uh, in a few moments actually, 11.30. The, the stream starts so we're going to get cracking here now thank you very much guys for joining us um, we're going to get ready now anyway get set thank up for, for the class okay Bro. thank you very much if you like what you've seen leave a comment below and subscribe to our youtube channel